So at the end of our podcast last week, I got asked a question about what is actually the best bearing. And uh, the truth is, uh, there's a lot of great bearings out there, but I really want to pose a little, slightly different question, is what is easiest for the maintenance guy? And when I started looking into this, it's actually kind of comical about what we ask our maintenance guys to do on airlocks. So I just wanted to put this little show and tell together so that everybody understands how bearings are installed and what the challenges are and how important it is to know what the bearing is when you're purchasing an airlock because that directly affects the long-term cost because if your maintenance guy can't change the bearing, then you're gonna have to pull it out to buy a new one or get it, uh, get it replaced prematurely. All right, so the first one I wanna talk about today is the ER style bearing. ER stands for external ring and the external ring is actually here on the outside. And uh, real simply, these are held in place the majority of the time by two set screws. When you do finally get this bearing removed, you have to make sure that you remove the divots that these little set screws leave in the shaft because when you go to drive the new bearing on, they will get caught on the bearing and will actually wedge in the ID and cause the bearing to get cocked, cause you all kinds of issues as you move forward. But what is funny is that the tolerancing of this housing actually needs to be smaller than the OD of this bearing. So what that means is that you're asking your maintenance crew to somehow beat this bearing out of place without distorting the housing and then install a new one in the line when the bearing is calling for a negative tolerance on the housing ID. So what that means is that you actually have to beat this bearing off and then beat this one back on. And so what we've done is we create some bearing drivers to do that, but most maintenance guys don't actually have this. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna try to actually destroy this bearing and then try to come up with some kind of tool to yank it out and pull it apart in pieces and then drive the new one on. So if you can imagine your maintenance guy is out there, of course this happens at 10 o'clock at night, and they're trying to beat the bearing back on at weird angles to try to press these, these back on. The maintenance guys are very capable and they get it done, but it is very challenging. So that, that's the first bearing that you have. And that's really a very common bearing that's out there, but uh, it causes a lot of challenges, especially when you've got a new guy involved. So that's the ER style bearing. So the next one that we're gonna talk about is actually a, uh, a double roller bearing here. It's a two piece. And uh, these are my favorite to talk about when guys have to uninstall and reinstall these in the field. And the reason that is, is because you actually have to shrink this bearing onto the shaft. So you actually have to have a volcano heater out there and you have to heat this bearing up to size. So you place it on the volcano, volcano heater, get it up to size and then try to put it, uh, get it on the shaft while it's, it's heated. So you've got all kinds of issues that you're dealing with. But before you can get that heated up and put it on, you have to get this bearing off the shaft. And so it has been shrunk on there. So your maintenance guy has to basically cut this bearing off the shaft in order to reinstall this back on. This is very challenging for your maintenance guys to do. And like usual, this doesn't happen when first shift, when you guys have great light, it never happens when it's not raining uh, it's, or a pretty day outside. It's snowing on these guys at 11 o'clock at night and they're trying to get these uninstalled. So it's really kind of comical to ask these guys to get this style of bearing uninstalled and put it in. Now we'll say that they do get it done because their maintenance guys at your facility are very capable. But the other thing that has to happen is that there's a, there's a nut here that has to be tightened and then the airlock has to be rotated and these have to be set. So these have to be rotated and then tightened back up, rotated and tightened several times to get these to seat correctly. And when you have lockout tagout procedures in place, it's virtually impossible to reset these bearings correctly in the field. But yet we ask our maintenance guys to do that every single day. So this is the two piece Timken bearing and how to replace them. All right, a third bearing that I wanna go over is uh, actually something that we do on a regular basis. The previous two bearings are very commonly used in the industry 
and most OEMs will use one of those two style of bearings for their outboard bearings. But uh, after rebuilding airlocks for 20 plus years, we started to ask ourselves the question, what would be easier? Uh, do we have to do the same thing? And the answer is no. So we started to, to look for a different bearing that we could use. And the best solution that we have found is actually a piloted flange bearing. And this piloted flange bearing with the squeeze lock really gives us the best of all the worlds that you're looking for. It gives you the uh, greasable bearing. It gives you a squeeze lock and so that you don't put the divots on the shaft. And uh, it also gives you the engagement that you're looking for. Now, with the ER bearing, you have to actually have a press fit in the ID to get the inner race of the balls to engage to keep the axial movement from going back and forth. But with this bearing, with the flange bearing, it's in the cartridge. So that compression that the bearing is looking for to keep it from moving axially back and forth is already there. So the tolerancing on this on this bearing can actually be looser. So it's much easier to pull out and reinstall. So this is a, there's a big difference between a piloted and a standard flange bearing. I don't recommend a standard flange bearing. I recommend a piloted flange bearing. And the reason is, is that when you do a piloted flange bearing, it actually goes into the ID of the housing and then it will help set the rotor back where it needs to be. So I'm actually gonna show you how easy it is to pull this apart and how your maintenance guys can do this. And you can train first, second or third shift how to do this. And it can be in the middle of the night. It can be when it's cold outside, it's very simple. Also, I, I wanna show you that by doing this, your rotor clearances can maintain the same. So there, there's lots of benefits to going towards this and that's why we go to it. So let me, let me go walk through this real quick. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just loosen this up real quick. And you notice by loosening this up, we're not clamped onto the shaft. And so we haven't caused any damage to the OD of the shaft, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up the four bolts that hold the flange bearing in place. I'm gonna take these all the way out. All of our airlocks, whether they are, we build them brand new for you or take your old housing and build you new end caps. When we build an end cap for you and put a flange bearing on it, we drill and tap additional two holes so that you can extract, you can put pushers on the back side. So you can take the same two bolts that you pulled out and put them in on the back side to push your bearing out. So I just uh, took these two out, put them on the back side. And now what I can do is I can just use a ratchet wrench to get behind there. Very quickly work it back and forth. You can see there's no beating and banging involved. I'm just working the bolts back and forth, getting that pilot to work loose. So now I've got my bearing free. And what I wanna point out here is that I've not caused any damage to my shaft. There's not any grinding that I need to do to this in order to make up for the ER bearing that has the two set screws. I don't have to try to cut the two piece roller bearing off and I don't have to try to heat anything up to put it back on. So the shaft just gets to stay in its natural state and then i can just back these two bolts back out and reinstall a brand new flange bearing so it's very simple so i'm going to back these uh back these back out real quick
So I'm gonna take my flange bearing, slide it right back on. Okay. Get it, line it back up, right where I'm at. Okay, then I'm gonna get my bolts, put it right back in the hole. Tighten it back down. Then I'm gonna take my clamp, put my clamp back on. Nothing special to it. And now I've just uninstalled and reinstalled the flange bearing, and it's that simple on every one. So it's really not about what bearing is better and what bearing uh, performs better or doesn't. It's more about what you can do for the maintenance guy. Because if your maintenance team can uninstall a bearing and reinstall it as it goes bad, you don't have to bring it in to get it uh, serviced for rebuild or you don't have to purchase a new one. So you can extend the life of your airlock by properly maintaining or you can just put them on a PM and say, you know what, once every 18 months or 24 months, I'm just gonna change those bearings just to make sure they're not gonna go out. And your airlocks can literally continue to run time and time again. So remember with Rotary Airlock, we're not gonna sell you what we have on our shelf. We're gonna sell you what, what you need. And what you need is the best bearing for your job. And you need the best bearing for your maintenance crew so that you can train them how to easily take those out and put it on. We can take this design and we can put it on any OEM airlock that you have, regardless the size, regardless the make and model. We can either build you a brand new one with this, or you can send us in your old ones and we can make the style for you. So I don't know how I can make it any clearer than uh, telling you that this this style of bearing is really the easiest and most friendly for your maintenance people. Also, I just want to show you one more thing as far as uh, the industries that are using it. All right, so the last thing I just want to show you real quick is that um, many industries are moving towards this. So these are shipments that are getting ready to go out the door. I just want to point out that this is going to a sugar application. This is going to a corn processing facility. This is going out to a starch application. This one is going out to actually process cereal. This is going out into a lactose application. And this final one is actually going out to another cereal facility. So it really has a wide variety of applications, but the bearing and seal setups that, that we have for, for you are not unique to just one industry. Thanks again for your time. Just wanted to say thank you for connecting with me. And I uh, wanted to make sure that you understand that I've got 20 years of problem solving experience in pneumatic conveying. I've evaluated thousands of applications and wanted you to know that if you've got a problem or you've got an application you're having issues with, connect with me here on LinkedIn or you can reach out to me on my email as well as there's additional information at rotaryairlock.com. Have a good day.